Hi, today we will add our own app to Alvada with its no-code no apps integrator. I will add a cloud-based email marketing platform, Moozand. Go to the Apps Integrator section and click the Add an App button. Set the name to your app and click the Save button. Here it is, our app with its internal entities. Now we need to set up these entities. The authorization will be the first. Go to the API documentation of the app and find the authentication section. Here we can see that authorization is achieved through the use of an API key and this means by token and this token is transferred as a get parameter. So we select with token type and manual method. Here we can see the card created. Click the continue button to set up a behavior template for all API requests of your app. The API doc says that we need to pass get parameters at each request. So we copy this parameter and paste it in the field. Then select the access token. And this token will be transferred at the moment of creating a connection to an app. Now we need to set up the request methods. Go to the API docs and find the section subscribers, add or update subscribers. Let's say we need to add subscribers to a mailing list indicating name and email. Go to the action section, click the add an action button and set the name for your app and click the save button. Now we need to set up the action fields. Go to the API docs. Here we can see what we should pass in the response. First it is a format, but it is statical, so we will start with mailing lists. Click the add a field button. Set the code. It is the same like ID. Set the name. Screen, specify and required or optional. This, the, the name of this field will be displayed during the automation setup. And please pay attention to such parameters as the type and option field. You can see whether this is an editable field or required in the API documentation. Follow these steps to add other fields. As you can see, this field has a true or false option. That means that it has a boolean type and don't forget to mention it. Next, we go back to the API docs and you will see that mailing list ID is IDs of the lists that need to be passed. So to avoid manual entering of these IDs every time we set up an automation, we should create a dynamic list. And this list will load all lists automatically. As it is a dynamic list, we create only a request. Open the API docs.
find the request URL, copy it, and paste in the URL field. Specify the JSON format. Remove API key and select false for statistics as we don't need it. Now specify the method get method the format JSON and choose authorization. Next, go to the Response tab and set up Response Parsing. We can see that the body of response will look like this. We need to get this array, context, mailing list IDs and names. Specify the path to the array and add to fields that come in the array. ID It is unique key and the name. Click the Save button. Now go to the Action section, select the Mailing List field and attach this dynamic list to the field. Let's say we also need to receive the ID of the subscriber in response to use this ID in further steps of the automation. We should add another field. Click the Add a Field button. Set the name and remove editable field check mark. So this field will not be displayed in the automation setup, it will be sent in the response only. Now we go to the request section. Add a request and specify the URL from the docs. Remove static mailing lists, replace it with dynamic, specify the JSON format and remove API key. Select the request method, format and authentication. Now add fields. As the mailing list has already specified in the request, we add name, field, email field, and subscription field. As it is a boolean field, don't forget to mention it.
Now go to the Response tab and select the ID field. According to the docs, this field comes in the context array. So we indicate the path to an array, type context.id and click the Save button. The action setup is completed. Now we need to set up status handling to have an opportunity to indicate an error if an automation is failed. Go to the status handling section, add a new handler, set the name and open the API docs. As we can see, the API documentation says that if the code field is zero, it is successful, otherwise it is an error. We specify the static message, error message, and type the dynamic message that will be substituted from the source app. Now we set up the condition for this error handling. If the code field not equal to zero, then it will be a mistake. Click the Save button. The setting is completed. Now we can proceed to testing. Go to the Automation section and reload the page. Click the New button and set up an automation. I will choose Google Sheets and a new row as an example. Let's say when I have a new row with an email address in it, I want to add this email to my mailing list in Moosend. Specify the receiving app that you have created. Select your action and create your connection. The connection has been created. So we need to set up fields. I select my mailing list and the column with emails. We can start the automation and wait for a while when the trigger occurs. Let's suppose that I have added several emails to my Google Sheets spreadsheets and here it is. Those emails has been have been transferred. Let's check in Moosend this mailing list. Yep, here it is. The emails that have been sent 